Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to another Ultimate Review. In today's episode, I'm going to give you the most in-depth and unbiased review of the Joy Audio Shine in-ear monitors. Now, I have reviewed a number of in-ear monitors on my channel. I list them, you can go watch them, but by far, the most unique pair of in-ear monitors are the Joy Audio Shine, which I'm going to feature today. And the reason it's so unique is because, so let me give you an example. So when you listen to music through the music app on your phone, and you want to tune the audio signature, you want it to have more bass, a little more treble, a little more uh, of the mid frequencies. So you go into the equalizer of the music app and you tweak around to get the sound to your liking. These in-ear monitors from Joy Audio, these actually have physical tuning switches built into the monitors themselves with which you can actually change the audio signature. So it is super unique and it's not something I've ever reviewed on my channel. So I'm super excited to give you guys the most in-depth review of the same. Now, everything about the Joy Audio Shine was super premium. Starting with the outer packaging and especially the box it comes in is super premium and high quality and is jam packed with a number of things inside. So inside the box, you get the user manual. You also get a really high quality leather pouch you get a chart that lets you know where the position of these tuning switches need to be adjusted to give you what sort of EQ output. So say you have a certain setting for pop, you have for jazz, for R&B and rock, or the normal or flat sound signature, which is where it doesn't give any preference to any particular frequency. And I'll get into detail about this a little later. You also get seven pairs of silicon ear tips and the seventh pair is actually installed on the monitors themselves. You also get a pin with which you can adjust these really tiny tuning switches on the monitors. You also get the two pin gold plated connectors with the silver cable that ends in a 3.5 mm audio jack. And of course you get the in-ear monitors, the Joy Audio Shine themselves. And now guys, I'll be honest with you. When I first saw that these in-ear monitors actually have tuning switches in them that supposedly change the audio signature, I thought it was a gimmick. I thought it was just something to, you know, ask for a very high price and fool the customers. But I was wrong because these actually make a difference to the sound quality and the sound signature. Now, in terms of the build quality, it's made of zinc alloy and it's got kind of a transparent finish. So under the right light, you can actually see the tubes inside and the drivers as well. Now, it's got some bit of heft to it, but nothing that makes it very ear heavy or makes it unpleasant for even long listening sessions. So overall, the comfort is great. And if you take the right sized ear tip, to fit your ear canal, you're gonna get a very good passive noise isolation as well. And as always, I keep mentioning this in every in-ear monitor review that I do, though it is not required, but I would highly advise that you do invest in a portable DAC. Nothing too expensive, nothing too fancy, but something that can supply these in-ear monitors with enough power so it can produce the maximum possible volume that they are capable of producing and also produce the highs, mids and lows with utmost quality. Now, if you take a closer look at the tuning switches on the monitors themselves, so they're numbered from one to four. So we've got four tuning switches on either monitor. So you get a total of 16 combinations. Now, the tuning switch numbered one is for your low frequency. The one number two is for your high frequency. Number three is for ultra high frequency. And the fourth kind of gives the push to all these three frequencies, kind of like a master switch. Now, unfortunately for in-ear monitor reviews, I obviously cannot relay the sound. I can only explain and you can take my word for it, but obviously these will vary from person to person. So I'll try to keep it as unbiased as possible. Now I judge monitors based on how they produce the three frequencies that broadly make up any sound that you hear. The highs, the mids and the lows. The highs or the treble where the really sharp sounding instruments are, the mids or the vocals, and finally, the lows or the bass. Now, when I did this testing, I obviously started with all the tuning switches in their lowest position. So they were turned off and that is the standard sound signature where you can call it to be a flat sound signature, where it doesn't give preference to any particular frequency. So it sounds the most natural in a sense. So in this sound signature, the highs, mids, lows sound without any sort of preference. So there was moderate separation between these three frequencies. They sounded natural, but you will feel that there is lack of richness. So you'd want a bit more sharpness in the highs. You'd want the vocals to be a bit more warm and you'd obviously want the bass to be a bit more deep. 
Now, although they give you presets as to what position you should keep these tuning switches to, but those are company standards, I would suggest that if you do get the Joy Audio Shine, you should actually play around with the tuning switches, understand which tuning switch stands for which frequency, and then tune them to the kind of audio signature that you like. So that is what I did. And as I did that, as I raised the first position, which was for the bass, then uh, the second tuning switch, which was for the high frequency, and the third is for the ultra high. Now, this is when I found that for most tracks, the highs sounded very, very crisp, very clear, a lot of clarity. But if you do turn on all these switches to their top position, so you turn all one to four, all of them on, the highs will sound a bit piercing a bit too sharp, at least for me it was. So I found that the ideal or the sweet spot was when I turned off or put the fourth tuning switch to the off position at the bottom on both the monitors. That gave me all the clarity without any of the harshness. So that was the best and the highs had no distortion at max volume and sounded very, very separate from the mids. So there was no intermingling and it sounded very sharp and quite rich as well. Now coming to the mids or the vocals, so keeping the tuning switches of one, two, three in their top position and keeping the fourth one, which is the overall switch off at the bottom position. Again, the vocals also sounded very good without any sort of hollowness, without any sort of extra sharpness in the vocals where it sounds tinny or artificial. So this was ideal and there was good separation from the highs as well and there was no distortion whatsoever. Now, honestly, the vocals could have used just a tad bit more warmth, which would have made it sound more rich. But this is me being really harsh and it's the kind of sound I prefer. But I felt even with this tuning um, position, and I've tried a number of other combinations as well, I always felt that the vocals could use just a bit more richness, a bit more warmth to make it sound more natural. And finally, we have the low end or the bass. Now the bass does have adequate punch to it, it is thick and it does have the thump factor as well. It doesn't quite get into the sub lows which some other in-ear monitors have. But overall, I would say if you keep these tuning switches, all four of them on or in the top position on both the monitors, and obviously you should have them identically set, not different for each monitor because that sounds very weird. Keeping all of them in the on position, the sound signature is kind of very uh, similar to the KZ ZSN Pro X. So kind of like a V signature where the bass and the highs are very much uh, given preference. So boomy bass and really sharp sparkly highs. But the bass response is not as great as that of the KZ ZSN Pro X. Now, if that is your preference, you don't like too much of boomy bass, this could be it. But in general, I at least felt that the bass should have been just a tad bit more deep. It does have depth. I'm not saying it lacks depth, but that extra reach, that rumble, that was missing. Now, this is where I'm going to talk about something that I feel is a disadvantage for the Joy Audio Shine. And that is its USB, which is these physical tuning switches. So as much as I enjoy and admire that these actually have tuning switches that work and it's not a gimmick, at the same time, you have to understand that if you use these daily, you have to carry this tuning switch pin with you all the time, or even a simple SIM ejector tool will work. Anything that can actually move these switches, they will do the job. But if in the middle of a song, you know some song is coming up where you want a different kind of sound signature, you'll have to take off your earphones, adjust the tuning switches on both of them and continue listening. So you have to do this every time you want a different sound signature. So as much as I admire this, it's also kind of a nuisance if you have to want, if you want to change them on the go. I much rather prefer having tuning switches or the equalizer on my music app because I can have set presets with just one click and I'm set to the kind of audio signature that I want. So this is good and bad at the same time, but it might not be a nuisance for you but maybe for some, it could be. Overall, it does get my seal of buyer with confidence. So guys, thank you so much for watching this review. If you have any other questions regarding this, do let me know in the comments below. I'll try my best to answer them. As always, uh, I'll leave a link of this product in the description below. It would mean a lot to me if you use that link to purchase this product, if that is what you want, because it's an affiliate link, so it'll help me run my channel and I can produce more such high quality content just for you guys. 
So make sure to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, share this video, and I'll catch you guys very soon in the next one. Cheers.